Hi, my name is Larry Kirkpatrick, and I serve Jesus in the territory assigned to the North American Division. I'm a working pastor serving a multi-church district in Spokane County, the second largest metropolitan area in the state of Washington. For the next few minutes, I would like to speak with the delegates to the 2015 General Conference session of Seventh-day Adventists. I want to share why it is imperative for the World Church to implement TOSC Position 1. In other words, that the Church would ordain pastors and elders according to the qualifications set forth in the Scriptures. I interact with non-Adventists almost daily, and they're not asking me questions about women's ordination, they're not asking me questions about uh, gay rights, although this is a state in which homosexual marriages are legal. They're not asking how the church can fit into the culture. They know about the culture, and they're not looking for a church that copies culture. But some are curious whether Jesus has a church that copies scripture. What would that look like? We need to consider a larger issue than just women's ordination. And that issue is how the church interprets scripture. That's really the big issue here. In 1 Timothy, Paul tells us that in the churches, women are not permitted to exercise authority over men. The same letter says that church elders must be the husband of one wife. Paul's letter to Pastor Titus repeats the same qualification. So the Bible is clear. And if you think back to Genesis, in the beginning, God designed us a certain way. Adam was to lead and protect, with Eve combining her own unique capacities for help. To a Western culture that is full of confusion, God gives a gift of clarity. But some insist that women be placed in positions where they will exercise authority over men in the church. They're calling for the church to adopt a new way of interpreting the scriptures. The North American Division has set out a way to do this in a 248-page document that they have given to the uh, TOSC. The NAD report approaches the Bible in ways destructive to the authority of Scripture. For example, it takes texts like those just mentioned and reinterprets them as Paul addressing only a limited local church problem. Another part of the NAD approach turns the New Testament itself into just a temporary stop on the way to God's alleged ideal. Teachings found in the New Testament are understood as only incremental advances toward his ultimate goal. And this makes God's ethical destination some vague place beyond the New Testament. The reinterpretation plans go even further. They treat the Bible as culturally conditioned. Inspired Bible writers are viewed as captive to their time and culture. Supposedly, the Holy Spirit failed to prevent the entry of biases and erroneous ideas into the Bible, so that all the way through, the Bible is a mixture of truth and error. None of these approaches rightly divide the word. Were the church to adopt them, people would soon be asking why we have a Bible-based approach when it comes to the Seventh-day Sabbath, but why when we come to the question of women's ordination, we follow the culture? What kind of an answer would we have to that? The answer would be that Jesus' church had compromised with culture. The Seventh-day Adventist Church would be following in the path of the Anglicans, the ELCA Lutherans, United Methodists, and others. All these have chosen to ordain women. All either have already submitted to or are in the advanced stages of embracing a culturally driven homosexual agenda. That's where this takes us. I want you to know that the proposals of the North American Division have not united us. We are not one happy family magically experiencing unity and diversity. Even here in North America, on the question of women's ordination, division leadership represents only a limited segment of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And it must be understood that if women's ordination is exported to the World Church, other things will come with it to your territory. If this was only a misunderstanding about ordination, I think the Church could endure whatever happens in San Antonio. But it's more. This has to do with how we interpret Scripture. This is a big deal. Any such permission granted by your general conference session vote would be portrayed by those advocating women's ordination as official legitimization 
for the methods of Bible interpretation that are used in support of it. The NAD and the Trans-European Division have already published volumes explaining their new approaches. Until now, Adventists have been a Bible people. We have been a people who seek to be a people of the book. But this would bring some changes. Divisions approving women's ordination will turn to these approaches to interpretation in support of their practice. And these new approaches to interpretation will become accepted within the church. And there's where the problem really is. So you see, the vote you'll be participating in is not just a vote on ordination. The effect a yes vote would have would be to lead to the le legitimization of the dangerous approaches to interpretation used by Anglicans, ELCA Lutherans, and some United Methodists, and now by a few Seventh-day Adventists. A yes vote would be portrayed as meaning that the World Church thinks it is okay to interpret the New Testament statements forbidding women as elders as actually only dealing with one or two obscure local church matters a long time ago. Again, such a vote will be considered as allowing imagined ethical trajectories to destinations beyond the New Testament to be authoritative over the New Testament. Treating the Bible as culturally conditioned will turn a destructive new page in Adventist biblical interpretation. Is this what God really wants for his people? Human reason will be exalted to justify practices now current in Western society. And what will be current in Western society three years from now, four years from now? The system will be there to justify it in the church. The result of letting each division decide independently for itself will be to change the church's long-standing approach to biblical interpretation. In effect, we will be adopting the very kinds of approaches that have devastated other churches and prepared the way for the homosexual agenda. But friends, God has taken his people from nothingness and called us to engage in the evangelization of the world with the everlasting gospel of Jesus Christ. We can never adopt the new methods of interpretation the church is being asked to adopt. How could we faithfully complete our heaven-assigned mission using these new approaches to the Bible? isn't going to happen. The result would be not unity, but schism. Delegates, I plead with you to reject the proposal to allow each division executive committee to decide for itself on the question of women's ordination. I appeal to you to employ the influence that God has given you so that the church can adopt TOSC position one, a position that is faithful and true to the scriptures, that the church not ordain women into positions of primary leadership of congregations, and that the church return to the biblical practice of not ordaining women as elders. Under Jesus' plan for men and women, the church will flourish. Under human plans, it will founder. Brothers and sisters, we are in a crisis place. We are even in an emergency place. If we were not a Bible church, no, we wouldn't be in an emergency. But we're a Bible church. And that's why what we're dealing with now is a giant issue. I believe that it's time to pray and study, and I ask you to pray and study this issue. Take your position in support of the plan which sustains the authority of Scripture. You and I believe that heaven has led God's church to this point. And you know, in San Antonio, you're going to participate in the most important general conference session of our lifetime. God can lead us through this challenge. This is his people, this is his church. He's showed us how to interpret his scriptures. You will participate in the most important general conference session of our lifetime. I want to thank you for your earnest attention. And I want to assure you that Jesus is coming soon.